It's your boy Shawnee B and DJ Top Fade the Rhythm Beast. Say that again, bro. This is DJ Top Fade the Rhythm Beast. I broke out with say. From I touched down in a Dominica, that's all I've been hearing. DJ Taffy, DJ Taffy, DJ Taffy. Now, Taffy, I'm on a mission to really learn about this Buyo sound. Um, I discovered it properly last year when Shelly and Asa was in the UK at an event last year, Carnival. And I'm like, this representation of Dominica, as a Dominican, half Dominican, I've never seen nothing <laughs> like this before. Would I be right to say that the representation within the Caribbean music right now for Dominica is probably at the, one of its heights? Yeah, it's at its peak right now, I can say, yeah. And you are kind of responsible for a lot of it as well. Yeah, I can probably say probably about 80 to 90% of, of the young artists around with me that, that, that help and push them out, you know, the beats and recordings and everything. First of all, tell me about the original sound of Booyah and what it means to you. How old are you, first of all? I am 28, you know. 28? Yeah. Okay. So what does that original sound of Booyah, when I talk about that sound, I think for me, the easiest like marker that I can stick in the ground of Dominica music for people is to say WCK yeah. and Balance Batty. God's if there's Dominican independence, that's the song that everyone's going to wheel that's out it. to represent Dominica. So tell me what the sound means to you. Well, to me, the sound is basically a whole mixture of, of different elements, you know, from different cultures. Um, but more or less the precautions would, would, would stand out for the Buyolas and the Soka. Yeah? So we have it on its own feel, you know. Soka have its own feel and then the Buyol have its own vibe, its own energy and everything. Yeah, man. Speak to me in a, a, a producer code. What is the key components then to bouillon? Well, uh, for my for my part, I, I haven't got any key element. To me, once once I find something good in my ears, I will go and take it around with and just build up the the whole vibe around it. Whatever I start with as, as the lead tone. Well, when when I say key elements, if you think about if you used to say bangra. Somebody would say, oh, the music, ding -ding 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 -ding. if you used to say dance, uh, you would say that music go boom, boom, get boom. Like, there's key sounds. What is that key component, that sound to Buyo? Okay, well, I, I, well, for that part, I can probably say the, the drums, which is basically the art of the music. So that, that is different. The, the, the drums are differentiate the, the song between Buyo and other genres, you know? And also we have the, the, um, the precautions, like the cow bell, you hear, tuk, 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 tuk. It's a bit different patterns, but something similar to that, yeah. Does those sounds come from a traditional meaning for Dominica? Um, well, I, I cannot talk for, for what was there before me, <laughs> before I was born, but yeah, I can, I can say that, man. So, and then the other thing that I've discovered is that the sound of Buyo really was like live bands, a lot of live bands from um, obviously WCK, Signal with Shelly and these guys, Serenade Band, like so. And then I've been told that you, and well, yeah, you really, <laughs> truly, you're the reason why it's so changed. Yeah, I mean, I, I came up with a different, a whole different vibe, you know. Um, I've been doing my thing for a very long time, but it only took me like last year to really get out there, you know. So people that know me wrong, people that know I was always doing my thing, but last year when I came out with the um, the phony rhythm, but last year, yeah, for the phony rhythm, we go, do, 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 do. That, that is my voice actually. Yeah, I created that with my voice and just build precautions around it and drums and everything else. So when you first started out as a producer, was you always producing traditional sound and music to Dominica? Oh uh, yeah, that's well. Since I know myself producing is with the music I produce, so yeah, I never stopped with that. Is that because of the household and the way your parents and your family was playing music, or is it just that you're Dominican through and through? Well, not really. Um, well, I, I I started doing music in school, um, and then where I used to live as a teenager. Um, they have Chubrike band, Chubrike used to practice like a house after my house. So I always hear them practice and then just like ring in my ring and I always wanted to be a part of that art form, you know? So I, that gets me into the field to make Buyo. I start playing keyboard, but I didn't really used to take it serious back then, but then now 
I have it on a whole different level now. Which I have a part of a band. Yeah, I mean, I, I started a, a small band um, while I was in high school called Legacy Band. They broke up due to one of the, the members passing away to a fetal um, stabbing or something. But after, after that happened, we, the band died and I just went back to DJing. And then after a while, I started back doing my producing again. And then until I catch on. Yeah. Now, you mentioned Triple K, and I have to say that that's probably great, like, homeschooling for you. To <laughs> yeah, basically, yeah, because I mean, I've been hearing him um, practicing like every other night. That, at, that, at that time, I've been practicing every other night. We always, at that time, there, they have songs like True Ghosts and Callers and them things there. So would you, in your bedroom, kind of like your fingers moving away to the drum? <laughs> I'm a producer, so I know what we do. It's like a kid yeah. that plays football. He's always on the, on the porch, like beat, beating on my laps, and you know, I can play drums too. You know, so I, I'd be on the porch beating on my laps, just following what he's doing. You know, but I, I, at, at that point, I wouldn't know that I would reach where I'm today. I just doing because I like to hear it. Yeah. So where was the change for you? Because I think that the change, we talk about we are and why I'm so glad that I came here is because and now I understand that there's Buyo and then there's nasty business. <laughs> is there a separation? Well, uh, the people put it like that so I can basically say that it was a separation between Buyo and nasty business, but nasty business is Buyo too. You know, so I can guess, I can probably say it's a subcategory for, for Buyo. Describe nasty business. Nasty business is just the raw edition of everything. So normally, like before, okay, um, like other other singers, entertainers would sing in a way that it um, like they they, they mask it, so it wouldn't come out raw. But right now, the nasty business of giving it to you raw, everything raw. You know, so they wouldn't they wouldn't blur no words. They would just say it as it is, straightforward. And and that, I think that is what that really um, catch people eye because people are not accustomed of hearing booyah with cursing or certain words, certain nastiness and so on, you know? But this what works for somebody might, work, might not work for somebody else, but that's just it. You're absolutely correct. Calypso soca music has always been very tongue in cheek. Like, you know, say, <laughs> for Kriya <Korea> Boaz. <laughs> but you can't. You can't say you guilty, can't say you know? Yeah. But with this, you can't hide from this. You can't hide from it. It's all over the place. Huh? What has been the driving force behind all of this? Where did it come from? Well, like, I can I can see Saturday people like Black like Ridge and Kenny G and so on. And then I guess the rest of us just follow after. And, yeah. Baby, push your in your pussy. I'm pushing it in my mouth. What was the need? Where, where, where was that trigger moment, do you think? Well, it, it, it come to, to the, the, um, the point where people like, like Kennedy that they might say, but I don't care what nobody think, I don't care what nobody think about me. So I'm going to sing what I want to sing either way. So, and then it's like, it, it, it give people a courage to, um, to do, to follow and do this thing. Cause I guess people are afraid of, of singing with bad words in it for booyah sake. Also, and people are watching it differently. Like we have the elders that I say, well, there's, there's nonsense. You're just swaying, it's just saying this. But we work people different. Everybody are like what they were like according to what Charlie said. Kenny G those names that you're calling. How old are these guys? Oh um, I, 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 I cannot really tell you that I don't I'm not sure what I, Is it is, is it I'll, I'll, I'll say probably about four, 40, yeah, about forty. Oh, so this are big man then. Yeah, I mean with, I mean most of us like about twenty eight or thirty but Kenny G, I should be about 40 something, I believe. Yeah. The, the reason why I asked that is because when I was speaking to um, somebody about it, they was like, surely this is like what Skeng and Raja Wild and Valiant and all these guys are doing. And that sound of Jamaica, that dancehall trap sound, yeah. which you could say nasty business, is an equivalent to dancehall trap for Dominica? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's driven by young people. So that's why I asked the question. Majority of us is young people. You know? I mean, you'll find somebody that about 30, 40 something in the mix, but the majority of us is, is like in the 20s, going up to the 30s. Do you feel that the principles and morals of somewhere like Dominica has dropped, taken a, a step down the ladder? That's why this kind of stuff is being allowed to be said so raw. I, I think people just start to learn to accept certain things because I feel like if, if outside artists come into Dominica to sing about those things, why can't they sing it too? 
you know, and then these guys come in here and, and sing do stuff to for a lot of money and then we have to sit and just sing clean way. You know? So But you know what they say sometimes, you know, everything we see is not good, you know. Yeah. <laughs> don't follow don't follow just because you are you following for the wrong reasons. Yeah, yeah. You know, you don't have to follow for the wrong reasons. That's not just because that is what that happened in my time. Like people like me, I I mean I never thought I would be part of that that kind of category. Seriously. Yeah, because I mean I never saw it as something that that would blast out like that, but I mean it working, so why not do it? So tell me about your involvement in this now. Like people are trying about and you said 80-90% of the rhythms is you. Yeah. Tell me about this. Well I wrote this so for well, majority of the um, the young artists, so them, um, nice, Wallaji, Freddy, um, go fast. A lot of them is me not doing the production. Well, some of them I, I used to, and then some of them I still doing it for. But yeah, I doing most of the production work uh, in terms of creating the rhythm, uh, recording, mixing, master, and everything, publishing, all that. Stuff. And how so this is like must be like a seven day a week thing for you guys. Yeah, I mean that, that, that is, I like like a lot of people have office jobs, I, that is my nine to five. Except mine is not really nine to five, it's like maybe nine to ten or further along, you know, because that is basically my job. Um I like basically I stay in the studio every day, all day, once I on island. Because most of the time I back and forth travel. Okay. Yeah, to perform. Yeah. Also, you performing as well, yeah? I, I sing as well. I, I, I have a few tracks on my on my sleep. You see, for me, this is all a discovery for me here, though. Yeah. Like, I never ever profess to say, yo, Mano Wagwan, I want to leave here and say, you know what, I have an idea of what is going on. That's why I'm on this mission to really discover what I've got on because this is spreading outside of Dominica it's right now. Wildfire. Like what? what? What is it that you're seeing? Does it? What is it that you're seeing when you say it's spreading like wildfire? Well, to me, right now, Buyo and Nasty Business is, well, I can, I can say Nasty Business put Buyo at a peak it has ever been before. I can, I can see that with all my guts. How do you know? What is those markers that you're seeing? Well, first of all, we didn't have all those artists in Nandika. It used to be like one, two bands, we have one, two artists. Right now, I don't know how much artists we have in Dominica because I, can, I don't think I can count on my own how much artists we have. And is that island-wide as well? That's island-wide, yeah. And the, the way our music playing in different islands now, that never used to be like that. For example, like Trinidad, we never used to play Trinidad. Like that, maybe maybe a few WCK, but other than that, we are never used to reach China. Right now, we are dominating the Caribbean. I can say that. When you was making those beats, those songs, were you thinking about outside of the country, or was you just thinking about Dominica? No, no, I wasn't thinking about just Dominica. I mean, I seen what what everybody interested in, so it's like I just doing my thing like normal. I just doing my thing, and. Hoping for the best, hoping everybody like what I produce. You know? what, was there one person, one person that was a catalyst, like one DJ that was championing the music, say in Trinidad, and then make it spread to Barbados? So how did how did it happen? That's what I'm trying to figure out. How is how is this just all of a sudden just spark like this? <laughs> well, you see, it's not just over the DJ too, You know, um, I mean, you see the platform of YouTube that that really helped him as well. You know. Because I mean, before it didn't used to have that. So I, I mean, we could have probably been in the place it be today because of YouTube and those other media platforms, but that they didn't have before. But now that we have it, we, I guess we just ut utilizing it how we should, you know. And when you got showmen like Asa, it helps. Yeah, man, the boy was a man. You know, the you know the pull from the tracks for sure. So I mean, he bring it around the Caribbean as well, just as us. You know, so you, you basically are the um, the face of the leader, you know. Yeah. I wanted to speak to Asa. What what makes Asa so different to everybody else? Because he's not here right now. He's in Canada, I believe. Well, it's a 
I I guess it's just his his energy, his vibe, his accent because he he, he not from the town side, but um, he from Grand Bay. That is like a kind of countryside, you know, kind of way. So they have a different accent from town people. So he like just differentiate, you know, how, how his music does sound well. Yeah. And because you work with so many artists, who's the other stars that the world should be looking at right now? Well, there are people like Nice, Dav Gwaji, Dav Freddy, Dav Kali, Kwan, they have a number of artists. X, we still have people like Rio, um, Fifi that just come on the scene, Trilogy. You know, it will, we know what Signal already and Shelly and the rest, but there are a few artists there and people should be looking out for because they have the potential. And you're seeing those streaming numbers climb right now, yeah? Yeah. What territories, what territories are we looking at as the hotspots? But I mean, why do we As in, what's the territories that are the, the, the highest streamers? Oh, uh, well, I, I can say the French territory is really taking it up a notch because if I, if I go into my analytics on my YouTube, I would see France on top, Paris, um, Guadeloupe, Martinique, this kind of places, Saint Martin. Yeah, so they, I would say they, the French territory is really because they're doing boil as well. Uh, and, and for a while now, they've been looking onto our material to, to, um, to, to follow through if it took a uh, check. So it's like the French territory, they, they like the boil. I mean, everybody has like the boil, you know, but the French territory has been liking the boil from a long time. Yeah. Do you think there's a possibility for that international hit in the same way that I'm a piano has broken out with certain records that sound like South African records? Um, Soka has had its moment, Dance All has had its moment. Do you reckon that there's going to be that time for Buyo? I, I think Buyo is in that time now. And we just have to make the best out of it. We gotta keep it flowing you know, as, as long as we can. And if you had to pick one artist that you would say is a person that should lead out the pack because do you think that they've got the most potential as an artist, as an entertainer? Well, to to me, I don't know, everybody different, but the the kind of ideas I just have and the, 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 the visions I just have, I would put myself first in that category. Yeah, yeah because I, I think in long term, I'm not just thinking of like, okay, I can, I can make a quick dollar for that season, like I, can, I can make a quick dollar for that season. I think in you know, the long run on things that can be happening you know, for the world. I looking at at artists I can help come up artists I want to because a lot of even though it's nasty business and I mean I doing everything, I'm not just doing nasty business, I have a mixture. You know, but I, I have a lot of um young fans following me and looking up to me, you know. So a lot of them like to want want to be into the music too. So I would like to be more involved in helping them come up as well, you know. Just like as I I have the rest. So it's called Nasty Business. Here's a question. What's the nastiest lyric that you've heard whilst recording a session? And you'd be like, yo, you can't say that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can, I, I, I can say it all right? Yeah, say it all. Well, I, I was kind of surprised when, when, when Nice came to the studio and sang that song on the phone with him, Situation Ship. So when, he to, when he started singing so I listened to this song, and I listened to it, and I didn't say like, Girl, you love sex for your money. I want to pay you for your pussy. I like, what? <laughs> I go, what, bro? <laughs> no, I, me, honest, I mean, I still did this song and, and so on, but I was like, boy, I get a lash from that. You check, but, but then the song, the song did well and the song played for the whole, the whole um, carnival season. So, I write now the song at like 2.2 million views. Wow. Yeah. Ha, has there been a song that you've got a lash back on? To me, most of the, most of the, um, the last two years song is always getting some type of lash. <laughs> um, but, yeah, and, you, and the artists are saying, let's see how far we could go to shock people. Bye. Hmm. <laughs> I had some lyrics, some lyrics in the studio, like, or well, like, wake, wake, wake me up. Wake me up like a Zandori, sucking on my toy. Toll is your, your, your thing. Because when I wake up in the morning and you suffer, I will. That is a head start. That is the best start. <laughs> you know? And, and like, again, everything is not for everybody. So it's just listen to what you want to listen to. You check. <laughs> That's just it. Yeah, uh, yeah, when I can say this, yeah, I'm proud of my Jamaican family because <laughs> when it was that bad <laughs>
guy that Dominique missed on. He said, Dominique can send that other troublemaker can right now. <laughs> so, uh, to sign off here, yeah, uh, Taffy, uh, could you could you select here yeah, your top three Booyah songs for summer 2024, starting at number three? Starting at number three. Um, yeah, that's a tough one. Okay. Uh, now, you know, that song with um, Rio, Kenny G and Fifth, um, I, I know why. I know why they don't like me. I know why they don't like me. Ha, I know why. Because they can't have me for me. They cannot. Ha, I know why they don't like me. So that's number three that you just give me, yeah? I, that, that's, I probably put it at number two. Okay. So yeah, number two. Like okay. What's that number three? Uh, I'll put it the, the bed with that cooked up by me and Freddy. And then it have that track of Puda's um, cover up. That is a hot track. The hottest thing right now. There you go. Wow. Dirty, dirty, dirty life we live in. Uh, if people want to follow you to find out exactly what I'm going uh, online on your Spotify, what would they look for? Well, you can look for me on YouTube, um, DJ Taffy, the Rhythm Beast, you can put on Instagram, the same um, name, DJ Taffy, the Rhythm Beast, yeah? And basically, all my platforms is the same name. You can look for my Apple Music, all I'm doing is DJ Taffy, the Rhythm Beast. Yeah. Charlie B, DJ Taffy, if you didn't know about Bouillon, you know a little bit more right now, trust me. Dirty or frig. <laughs> <laughs> Dirty.